All three were beaten even after admitting to listening to BBC Radio and passing out pamphlets because the Gestapo could not believe no adults had helped them with the resistance. Welcome back, everybody. This is Rain and Jeno here with another sinister reaction. And today we're going to be reacting to another Death Row Executions video. Mm -hmm. mm. So today is Death Row Executions, episode 50, Innocent Teenager Executed by Nazi Germans, the story of Helmuth Hubner. <sighs> <clears throat> Could be intense. <sighs> okay. I'm mentally prepared for it. All right. <sighs> Let's get this thing on big screen here. Now, remember, guys, I will be dropping the channel link here for the original video in the comment section. I will pin it. So make sure you go and show uh, Air at Death Row Execution some love. Oh, and apparently there's... Apparently we get a shout out in this video, so... I'm really looking forward to that. Me too. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let's see here. We're going to start this bad boy in 3, 2, 1. Throughout history, there have been people who have committed some of the most heinous crimes fathomable. For those crimes, they have been convicted and sentenced to death. Welcome to Death Row Executions, where we take a look into the lives of society's worst offenders. And now, your host, Air. Love that intro. Hello everyone, this is Air, and welcome to the 50th episode of Death Row Executions. Today's story is on Helmut Hubner, who was 17 years old when he was executed for speaking out against Nazi Germany. When we first read it, uh, I mean, we opened it and we saw, you know, at the end, you could see the ink was a little blotted out because he must have shed some tears uh, because he knew that was the end of his life on this earth. Dear Sister Summerfield and family, when you receive this letter, I will be dead. But before my execution, I have been granted one wish to write three letters to my loved ones. I want to thank you for the letter you sent to me, dear Sister Summerfield, which they withheld from me. I also want to thank you for the many happy hours I was able to spend in the circle of your family. Please remember me kindly. I'm very thankful to my Heavenly Father that this agonizing life is coming to an end this evening. I could not stand it any longer anyway. My Father in Heaven knows that I have done nothing wrong. I know that God lives, and He will be the proper judge of this matter. Until our happy union in that better world, I remain your friend and brother in the Gospel, Helmut. Between 1918 and 1933, and before Nazi Germany, there was the German Republic. Helmut Hubner was born there on January 8, 1925. Helmut grew up in a religious Mormon family following the Church of Latter-day Saints, also known as the LDS Church. His mother raised him alone before meeting a man by the name of Hugo Hubner, who in turn gave Helmut his last name. Growing up, Helmut was an extremely intelligent boy who was a Boy Scout for many years. He respected his parents and was well received by his peers. Now Nazi Germany, Hitler's reign was just starting and many people felt that he was a powerful speaker who promoted a better Germany with strong national pride. He promised work to the unemployed and promoted many other things that got many people on board without knowing they were making a deal with the devil. Some opposed him, but they were soon outnumbered or stayed silent. In 1933, the Boy Scouts were banned in Germany by the Nazis, and many youth joined Hitler Youth, with their motto being blood and honor. Oh, At the age terrible. of eight, yeah. Helmut went from a Mormon-supported Boy Scout member to Hitler Youth, and many said that initially, 
Helmut was very excited about joining the group. He was very popular with other members and overall had no issues. While in school, he even wrote a long essay about why Hitler was a good leader and was very happy with his work and the good grade he received. Being the bright and intuitive boy he was, he began to learn more about his religion and theology. Although he grew up in a family that was not so much into politics and his adoptive father Hugo was pro-Hitler, Helmut took it upon himself to learn about politics. His friends were later quoted saying that he knew more than many of his elders and he would purposely ask questions he knew they would not be able to answer just for the fun of it. In November of 1938, at the age of 13, Helmut witnessed the Night of the Broken Glass. A 17-year-old Jewish boy by the name of Herschel killed a German diplomat, and with that, a violent riot ensued that aimed towards destroying everything Jewish. Jewish-owned homes... I thought I had actually heard something about that in uh, history class in high school. <coughs> oh, yeah? Yeah, it's kind of ringing bells to me, to be honest. Let's get back to that in uh, three, two, one. Synagogues, schools, stores, and hospitals were demolished and or destroyed by Nazis and Hitler Youth. The name came from the amount of broken glass that was scattered in the streets. Although the riots were not started by Jewish men, 30,000 of them were arrested and put into concentration camps. This night started the decision of the final solution which meant that their plan was to kill all Jewish people. That was the first time Helmut questioned Hitler and his regime. He did not like how Jews were being treated, and he felt that as a Christian, he had an obligation to open people's eyes to what was really happening. Not too soon before the Night of the Broken Glass, a Jewish member on the board of his church by the name of Solomon Schwartz was met by a sign on the church's door. The sign read, Jews not allowed inside. One of the religious leaders by the name of Arthur Xander banned Jews from attending any services. Arthur was a Mormon branch president who was a Nazi and wanted to prove that the Latter-day Saints were behind the movement and good Germans. He also wanted to start each church service off by saluting and giving praise to Hitler. Although Helmut disagreed with this new rule and was very upset, he still went to church because he knew that there were other people who had the same mentality as him, including his two friends, Rudolf Hub and Karl Heinz. The following year, in September of 1939, Germany invaded Poland, and Hitler came out with a rule that German citizens were no longer allowed to listen to radio unless it was approved by the German leaders. Really? Propaganda wow. filled the streets, and if people were caught listening to any foreign broadcasted radio station, they were in most situations sentenced to death. There were wow, still illegal radio sets in people's <sighs> houses, see. but it was also common for soldiers to bring back radios from other countries after they had fought in war. Helmut's older half-brother by the name of Gerhard Hubner was a Nazi soldier, and after his group of troops defeated the French army, he brought back a small roller radio and stashed it in his closet. In 1941, now 16 years old, Helmut began working at the Hamburg Social Authority where he met a boy by the name of Gerhard Dewar, not to be confused with his older brother. The two shared the same ideas and Helmut later recruited him to join his friends Rudolf and Karl in a resistance group against the Nazi party. They began to sneak off and listen to foreign radio stations. That same year, Helmut found his brother's shortwave radio that he hid away in the closet, so now he was able to listen to stations like the BBC when he was home alone. Nice. His brother had actually been sent off to fight again, <clears throat> so he was not worried about being yeah, caught. After listening to what was truly going on and how the German people were being misled, Helmut came up with the idea of creating visual pieces that would make German people aware of what was really happening in the war and to tell them that the Nazi party was a bunch of criminals. He also wanted to warn people that Germany was inevitably going to lose the war and that as a former member of Hitler Youth, he had witnessed how they mistreated people. 
He believed the British accounts of what was happening over his own country because they gave a more detailed account of what was going on. Helmut gathered his friends, Rudolf and Karl, after a Sunday church service and told them to come over to his house so they could hear the broadcast as well. Being that Helmut was working as Arthur Zander's secretary, he had been given a typewriter. The boys then spent time typewriting warning messages on pamphlets and were able to pass out around 60 of them that read, German boys, do you know the country without freedom? The country of terror and tyranny? Yes, you know it well, but are afraid to talk about it. They have intimidated you to such an extent that you don't dare talk for fear of reprisals. Yes, you are right. It is Germany, Hitler Germany. Through their unscrupulous terror tactics against young and old, men and women, they have succeeded in making you spineless puppets to do their bidding. Some flyers said that Hitler was a murderer, and some said that he was the guilty one. These pamphlets were handed out throughout Hamburg, and some were left in hiding spots like telephone booths, mailboxes, or pinned on bulletin boards. They were cautious and scared, but had a little bit of confidence because Helmut had a Nazi stamp given to him by Arthur, so he had stamped each pamphlet as if it were official notices from the Nazi party. The boys also made a pact that if one of them were to ever get caught, that person would take the full blame and not incriminate the other two. After the first wave of passing out flyers was successful, Helmut then worked diligently to create more flyers with new information and Rudolf later said that Helmut had created 29 different flyers. Now, as opposed to only making statements about the Nazi party being liars, he now backed up all of his claims with evidence and made it known where the information was coming from. Out of the hundreds of pamphlets that were passed out, less than 10 were turned into the Gestapo or Nazi police. The Gestapo knew that there was an anti-Nazi group around but had no leads at the time and assumed it was an older college professor or a knowledgeable man. One night after passing out flyers, Karl was stopped by the Gestapo and they asked him what he was doing. Karl responded that he was coming from a friend's house and when they asked where that friend lived, he gave another friend's address who lived across from Helmut. It was this scare that made Karl burn any extra pamphlets he was not able to pass out before going home so that he would never be caught with one in his possession. Other than that one scare, things were going well and Helmut was becoming more and more eager to get the word out, so he came up with a new idea to pass out flyers in French. Karl tried to talk him out of it because he felt that it was too risky and knew that Helmut was not fluent in French. Helmut then brought up a young church member by the name of Werner Kantz, who was fluent in French and said that he was going to ask him. The next church service, Helmut went up to Werner and asked if he would be willing to translate something in French for him. Werner was open to helping, so Helmut gave him a pamphlet. Werner took his time reading it, and the more he read, the angrier he got until he had enough and shoved the paper in Helmut's chest. He told Helmut that he wanted no parts in speaking against Nazis at all. Watching this encounter from the office window above, was a member of the Nazi party by the name of Heinrich, who was assigned to watch out for anything out of the ordinary at that church. He came out and asked to speak to Werner and questioned him about the encounter. Werner brushed it off as if it was not a big deal, but Heinrich insisted on knowing what happened. Werner opened up and let him know everything. Sorry about that, guys. Uh Dogs decided to get up and start walking there, so get right back to this in three, two, one. And that's when Heinrich came up with a plan to have Werner pretend that he was interested in order for him to have physical proof. Werner agreed and went back downstairs to Helmut saying that he changed his mind. In that moment, Helmut was hesitant and did not give Werner a copy. He waited almost a week and on February 5th, 1942, Helmut came to church and gave Werner a copy of one of his pamphlets. Without saying anything or even looking at the paper, Werner walked it upstairs and gave it to Heinrich. Heinrich read the pamphlet, and once he was finished, he got on the phone and called the Gestapo who came to the church within 10 minutes. 
Helmut was immediately arrested and directed the Gestapo to his grandparents' house where they in turn found the typewriter and flyers. After collecting the evidence, he was taken to the Hamburg Gestapo headquarters where he was interrogated. The following week, Karl noticed that Helmut was not there at church, and after service, one of the church leaders made an announcement that Helmut was arrested, but he had no other details. Karl's mother then questioned him because he had been going to Helmut's house multiple times a week, but Karl reassured his mother that he had no idea why Helmut was arrested, and inside was praying that Helmut kept his promise on the pact that they had made earlier. While being detained by the Gestapo, they came wow. out with they came out with a news report about Helmut stating that they persuaded him to confess, which meant that he was tortured into confessing that he was responsible for passing out the pamphlets. Not satisfied with the torture. confession, yeah. they continued to torture Helmut until he admitted that two other friends helped him pass out the flyers. On February 10th, just five days after Helmut was arrested, Rudolf and Karl were also arrested. All three were beaten even after admitting to listening to BBC radio and passing out pamphlets because the Gestapo could not believe no adults had helped them with the resistance. One man by the name of Otto was a family friend who had visited for a short while, so they brought him in for interrogation for three days. When they were satisfied that Otto was innocent and had no idea of Helmut's plans, they released him. Before leaving the building, the Gestapo told Otto that it was serious that they needed to win the war, eliminate Jews, and ended with saying that the LDS church would be next because they had no room for anything American. Five days later, the Mormon leader Arthur Zander excommunicated Helmut from the church to make a statement that they had nothing to do with having any of the same beliefs as Helmut. For the next few weeks, the boys were beat and tortured for sport. Carl recounted one occasion where a Gestapo wow. was having a bad day and smashed his face in a concrete wall which gave him a bloody busted nose. He later got in trouble by other Gestapos Jeez. for dirtying their clean wall. That was the type of abuse they encountered on a daily basis while being locked up. On August 11th, 1942, Helmut was tried in court. While being questioned, he was asked if he it's truly believed dense. Germany would lose the war and he responded by saying, don't you? It was said that Helmut most likely knew his fate was sealed, so went out with confidence. He was found guilty of treason and for aiding the enemy in the war. For this, he was sentenced to death by method of the guillotine. Along with his sentence of death, wow. he was sentenced to lose all of his civil rights, so while being held in prison, he had to endure constant abuse and was required to remain in a cold, empty cell with no mattress, toilet, or blankets. Before leaving court, Helmut looked towards That's the judge terrible. and said, Now I must die, even though I have committed no crime. So now it's my turn, but your turn will come. Fifteen-year-old Rudolf was sentenced to ten years at a labor camp, while seventeen-year-old Karl was sentenced to five years at a labor camp. The boys got lighter sentences because Helmut kept his word and took all of the blame. Karl knew this because before trial, the Gestapo made a mistake and the two boys were in the same area together and Helmut gave Karl a smile. In that moment, he knew that Helmut kept his word. While being held in prison, Helmut's mother was by his side and his lawyer appealed for clemency but it was denied by the Nazi Ministry of Justice at 1.05 p.m on October 27, 1942, the day of his execution. Before his execution, the Gestapo gave Helmut permission to write three letters, one to his mother, one to his grandparents, and one to a family of the church he attended. Helmut was then taken to this room where he was executed and pronounced dead at 8.13 p.m. Jeez. Thank you guys for watching another episode of Death Row Executions. Pretty sad story. And now for discussion and question time. Has anyone noticed that throughout history, the bad, torturous groups always prevail, and when innocents speak up or speak out, they are killed? It's true. Yep. The groups with ideologies of hate and division prevail 
while the ones expressing peace get shut down. I find it sad that this young brave boy was killed for speaking I the agree. truth. Yeah. Very sad. Do you guys think staying quiet would make you just as guilty as the ones handing out the evil? When we feel like our lives might be in danger, I think the safest thing we can think of is to stay quiet, and it takes brave people to speak out, speak up. Before I go, I would like to give a shout out to Vicky. Thank you for becoming a patron on my Patreon. Also, there is a channel called hey. Sinister RP that has just started reacting to my videos. If you would like to react with them and share your thoughts, head on over to their page and a link to their channel will be in the description box below. Thank you, Air. I, I, that actually made me... That was nice. I'm not going to lie. After that story, after you triggered us once again <laughs> that uh that that kind of lightened up the mood there and like if do a little dance do a little love <laughs> we really appreciate that we do and thank you honestly uh we really enjoy um not even just the fact that we can react to these but even just have this content for free i mean it's so good it's, it's it so well done and you put so much effort into it right so um not even just a thank you from us, but really a thank you from everybody for doing what you do. You know Absolutely. what I mean? So make sure you guys um, head over to Death Row Executions and show Air some love. And uh, until next time there, keep it spooky.